Welcome to day 11 through the book of Ezekiel today, chapters 31 to 33. And what I'll share with you today is um, a bit weird. It's, it's not really a devotion as such, and it's certainly not a principle that I'm going to pick up and preach on. It's more of a question that I have for my own life and a desire that I have that I think is something good to pray. Um, but uh, before I get onto those verses, I do just want to read uh, verses 10 and 11 of chapter 33 because this is a universal principle in God and my friend, you had better understand this principle. Okay, this is like fundamental to who God is and how God deals with you and me. Uh, this is at the end of the little speech that God gives to Ezekiel about being a watchman. And he says it's, it's like a watchman who stands on a tower. If he sees the enemy coming to a city, uh, but he doesn't warn anyone. That's his job to warn people. And then they come and everyone gets slaughtered. God will hold the watchman accountable for the blood of the people. Because he was meant to warn them. But if he does warn them and they don't listen to him, then he will be free from any guilt. And then God says this, Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, If our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away or waste away in them, how can we then live? So, so the people are saying to Ezekiel, well, you keep on telling us we're so sinful and that God is holding us accountable for our sins and the idolatry of our past has now reached its boiling point and we are going to be held account. Well, if that's the case, Ezekiel, and our sins are lying upon us, then there is no hope. It's too late for us. And listen to God's response to that. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? So that's not today's devotion, but I, do, I did want to just read that to you. And I do want to make sure you know this, my friend, that God does not delight in judging people. He does not delight in the death of the wicked. It is God's desire that all should come to repentance. And I don't care how long you've been sinning and what you've done. It is never too late to turn. And if you will turn, you will live. Okay, so what did I want to comment on today? Well, this is verses 21 and 22 of chapter 33. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, on the fifth day of the month, that one who had escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has been captured. Now the hand of the Lord had been upon me the evening before the man came who had escaped, and he had opened my mouth. So when he came to me in the morning, my mouth was opened, and I was no longer mute. Okay, so as you would have seen as you're reading through the book of Ezekiel, there were long seasons in the life of Ezekiel where he was mute. Now, whether he means he just wasn't given liberty to prophesy or whether he was actually rendered mute, which is probably the case, the way it's described in some other chapters, is up for debate, but it is probably the latter. He actually was mute and he could not speak. And then when God wants him to prophesy, boom, his mouth gets opened. And, it, and then this flood of these prophecies would come out of him. Okay, so now I want us to think about the combination of the two principles we saw in this reading. On the one hand, God says to Ezekiel, you're a watchman. If you do not warn people about their sin, I will hold their destruction against you. I will hold you accountable because you didn't warn them that judgment was coming because of their sin but if you warn them and you speak the words that i'm giving you then even if they don't listen to you you will be held uh, innocent of their blood okay then we are reminded in these verses i read to you that there were long season seasons when ezekiel was mute okay so 
I mean, obviously what I'm driving at here is if I'm mute, I cannot warn people about their sin. There were long periods that by the hand of God, Ezekiel could not prophesy. He could not warn people of their sin. He could not tell them to repent. He could not share the message of God. But when God opened his mouth, he was to speak. Okay, so I think there is an analogy of that in our lives as Christians, because we all do kind of feel like we are responsible for sharing the gospel with those around us. We hear the words of Jesus saying to us and to the church, you are the light of the world. Uh, a city set on a hill can't be hidden. There's no such thing as an undercover Christian, they say. You know, you, you don't light a lamp and then put a basket on it. You put it high on a lampstand so that it gives light to everyone in the house. And uh, the Bible in, in other places tells us, you know, we ought to go into all the world and preach the gospel so that whoever repents will be saved. Uh, we are to be ready to give an account to anyone who asks us for the hope that we have. There's all these verses. And yet, in my own life, I've got to admit, there have been long seasons where I have not witnessed to anyone. Where I've not led anyone to the Lord. Uh, or even just shared the gospel with someone. And I can really get down on myself and feel like I'm a failure and I'm failing God. And I'm not a, I'm not a lamp on a lampstand. I'm not a city set on a hill. And... Because I'm not witnessing to everyone, but in my own experience, it seems to me that it is more like the situation with Ezekiel, where we have a message, we are told to speak. We, are, we must be the light of the world, and yet there are long seasons where it feels like there is no opportunity. It's like you're mute, but there will be moments when God opens a door and you must be willing then to take your moment and share your testimony or share a conviction with someone. And I guess that leaves me wanting to pray, God, please help me to discern the times and the seasons in my life. Lord, please let me know when I should speak and give me the words to say, without living with this constant sense of condemnation that I'm not witnessing to someone. Uh, because even Jesus said, you know, don't cast your pearls before swine. There, there's, there's times when actually you shouldn't share the gospel with someone. They're just not ready. Their heart is not in it. But God, give me the wisdom to know, you know, where the lines are drawn and when I should speak and when I shouldn't. Well, maybe you want to pray that together with me this morning. God bless you. See you tomorrow.